All right, everybody, we are back with another video trying to give you an update on what we have done in the car collecting arena over the last probably three weeks or so. When we last left the last video, we mentioned that we were going to um, be opening up a box of Allen and Ginter. Um, had it all set to go on a um, on a video for you guys, but the problem uh, came about with in the recording of the video. We had some major technical difficulties and me and my boys ended up giving up on the idea that night. So um, we just kind of broke it on our own without any video um, and had some interesting uh, hits in that particular box. So I just want to share with you the, the main story of that box. Um, we first of all got a, a couple of nice um, relic cards and uh, one of them being a uh, uh, framed mini relic of um, Devers, uh, Raphael Devers from uh, Boston, which was really kind of neat. It's somehow not coming into focus, but it should. Um, so that was our first uh, major hit of that particular box, and I think that one is actually numbered. Oh, actually, it's not numbered. But anyway, a pretty decent hit to get a, um, a uh, framed mini like that um, in the box, but it got a lot better from there. Um, we also got... Uh, well, this was one other one that was in there too, which was um, Theo Epstein, uh, a uh, uh, larger size relic card for a hit for him. I guess it was um, probably something he wore on field when uh, the GMs. It might have been actually. I know it was from probably the Cubs. Um, I'm guessing from the World Series, but anyway, because um, you don't really see a GM walking around with a a jersey very often, but. Um, but that was kind of neat. And then finally in that box was, uh, on the relic side anyway, was a uh, Aaron Judge. This is the first Judge relic um, we have gotten in uh, in any box. So that was kind of a nice little deal there. I'm sorry about the, uh, the silly, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, focus for some reason just likes to go in and out. But the big deal... Um, well, in addition to that, outside of the box, we um, we picked up in retail. Uh, one of my sons got a, a couple of, of um, packs, and I think it was Walmart or something, and ended up getting a uh, framed mini auto. And this one was, uh, I think it's Brandon Woodruff. Yeah, Brandon Woodruff of the uh, Brewers. That's his rookie uh, framed mini auto. So that was kind of a kind of a neat one to get. Not in that particular box that we bought, but it was uh, it was one that was uh, picked up through retail. So one of these days I'm going to figure out why this thing does not focus like I wanted to, but apologize for that. But anyway, getting back to the final bit of that story, the um, the main issue came down to us just kind of ripping open packs, and my youngest son uh, looks over and he says to to me and my oldest one. I got a, a rip card <laughs> and me and Jack, the older one are looking, we just kind of immediately frozen. Like, what are you talking about? So he turns around and shows me this, a, uh, Masahiro Tanaka rip card. It is the first rip card we have ever pulled. And we've been probably doing Allen and Ginter now for a good three years. Uh, but these are really tough to hit. It, I think they come, one in maybe two a case at the most um but yeah that was a nice one to to actually come on focus for me please yeah um that was a real nice one to hit 72 out of 75 as well um but the the main concern came down to if you guys know what rip cards are it's the ability to uh decide actually make a decision whether or not you want to rip the card or whether or not you just want to keep the card and by ripping the card you have an opportunity on the back. Uh, it tells you there's a couple of different options um, that you've got. You've got a framed mini. I'm um, sorry, a, uh, a, a super short print mini, which is numbered from 351 to uh, 400. You could have a red auto mini, which is a really nice hit. Um, a metal mini. Um, a wood mini and... I think that might be the 
the final four. There's four of them. But anyway, the big decision came down to whether or not we ripped this card or not. Because I believe at the time, this is going back three or four weeks ago, um, you could probably get the, sell this card for, for the neighborhood of uh, 80, 90 bucks, maybe even more than that. So it was almost enough to pay for the entire box. Um, so it was a real tough decision. But my kids, of course, uh, won out on it because they kept saying, we got to rip it, we got to rip it, we got to rip it. So what do we did? What do we do? We went ahead and we ripped it. So on the back here, you can tell, actually, I can tell you the other thing that was a, a one-of-a-kind sketch card was a, the final one. So um, real nice opportunities down here, if you see, um, that you can get in that card. and I mean, in the inside of these cards. Um, there's actually um, uh, double rip cards where you, you can get uh, a different player on each side and you get two chances to rip. Um, this one was just a single rip. I knew it wasn't a, a mini metal parallel. I, we, one of our other little hobbies is metal detecting and we took a pinpointer, went over the outside of it and realized there was no metal inside of it. So I knew it was either a, a red mini, a mini parallel, or a um, wood or sketch. So I knew it was one of four. But um, we ended up ripping it, and the result was your typical um, exclusive mini, which is the, the most common of the four or five remaining that I mentioned. But um, we got a uh, Nolan Ryan, uh, which was uh, a nice hit if you're going to hit one of the uh, exclusive super short prints uh there's a lot of ryan collectors out there and i thought that was kind of a you know if we weren't going to get anything major like a like a red auto or something i could i could handle that as our hit um the one thing i saw though was i didn't see any of them that were graded online so my thought was maybe we can get back at least the the price of what we would have been able to sell the the tanaka rip card for unripped and uh maybe get it graded so that's what we did. We went. I went ahead and and sent it off to uh, Beckett for a grade, and uh, got that back the other day. So um, this is the car that was inside. This is the um, Nolan Ryan uh, Mini, and this one here is actually a uh, Beckett uh, nine point five, and it actually had a ten on the surface. I sent this in in hopes that maybe we would get a um, a pristine which would be really nice, but I was wrong in, in only getting one area of uh, pristine, which would be the surface, which was a 10. Everything else came out a 9.5, so this graded as a, a gem mint 9.5. I don't think anybody else has graded one of these. Um, my plan is to throw this on eBay probably sometime this week to uh, recoup you know, a decent amount of the cost of that box. I think I'm going to hold on to the, um, the Judge Relic maybe get rid of the Devers relic. I'm not sure yet on that, but but anyway, it gives us a position where we could maybe pay for the box um, with just this card. And I'm sure the Tanaka card might have a few uh, dollars to, might maybe a few dollars to somebody, um, even though it's ripped. So that's our plan with that particular box. And I just wanted to kind of share that as uh, an interesting story that we had. But before I go, I was going to um, give you a quick update on some of the things that we, other cars that we um, have have been able to get over the last probably three or four weeks. Um, there's a uh, online break, break uh, site that I use uh, quite often now, and I'll give them a plug. They're uh, Vintage Breaks out of um, New Jersey. Um, Leighton, Mike, John, those guys are run a really good uh good um online break um business there but in any event what you do is you go on and you can buy spots for um particular uh packs that they have and a lot of these packs can be pretty old uh, in fact if you saw anything about the nationals they um broke a uh 1955 tops cello pack on the main stage at the nationals and pulled a, I mean, a really nice uh, Mickey Mantle, which was the the card to hit in that set. And uh, they had PSA graded on site and gave it a nine. I think Layton said it was the um, first nine uh, that PSA has issued for that card in like two decades. So 
they were really pumped about that. But that particular break was quite expensive to get into, and I didn't have the funds to to pull that off. So um, what I did is I got into one which was the uh, a 1968 Topps baseball uh, pack. Got a spot there, and I got a spot in the um, 1970 Topps baseball. And uh, as luck would have it, I actually hit a uh, a Hall of Famer in the 1970, and that one was a Harmon Killebrew. So what's nice about this particular card is that it is super super clean. I mean, corners are just like it's just came out of it did just come out of a pack. Um, albeit, you know, how many years is that? Uh, over 50 years later, 54 years later. Um, only issue might be a little bit off center. As you can tell, it's a little off center, uh, left to right. Um, top to bottom is really actually not too bad, but left to right, a little off center. Um, so the edges, the corners, the surface, everything is just beautiful on this. Um, one small, and you can see it down here, it's not that small, but um, down by his pants is a little photo. Um, used to see these a lot in the older cards. Little photo um, blip there. So there was something in the actual uh, particular photo on this one where it made a little mark by his pants there. But outside of that, this car, there is this is as clean as you're going to get, especially for like a 1970 card. So anyway, um, I'm going to send that one into PSA, and I'll let you guys know what that comes back at. Um, if that comes anywhere near a 9 or a 10, that's, that's really good. It's not going to get a 10 because of the centering. But um, if that comes back as a nine, I'll be pretty pumped about that. That'll be a pretty nice card. So anyway, that was the real nice hit in that that uh, grouping. Um, and then the other one was a uh, where was it? I know I had it here somewhere. Um, oh, this guy. This was the '68 Sonny Siebert, I think his name is. Um, so it's a common, but again, super super clean. And this one's much better centered. Um, in fact, if you look at it, I mean, there's there is not much wrong with this at all i mean maybe top to bottom so i might send this one in as well because you know you never know on these uh you know how many people are might be looking up for this type of a card in a high grade i do see a little print mark again now that i'm noticing right above where it says picture there but other than that just like super clean you can tell by, by the way i move this back and forth the sheen on that card the corners like i said are just awesome so those were the two in that break but what was really cool is that my name got entered into um a uh, a drawing so what they do is they have what they call their big board and they um give you an opportunity to to get into a drawing for um some nicer cards there's some pretty nice cards out there and um i got into one it may have been 45 spots or something so i got a spot in the um uh, sandy koufax uh, 1964 tops card it was in an sgc or security guarantee um companies uh which is another solid grader usually for the older cards um but it was done on this uh i mean the ones pre-war but it was done for this uh 1964 card well guess what i end up winning the um auction on that and that just arrived the other day too so there's my 60 um 64 uh, Sandy Koufax in an SGC 60, which looks like it correlates to about a five, a PSA five. So if my numbers and what I've saw on eBay are is correct, that's that's going for about 50 bucks. So maybe even more. So that's just a solid looking card. I mean, you know, a little bit of corner wear, but I mean, 1964 Sandy Koufax, you can't go wrong with that. So that was kind of cool. Um, some of the other ones I've gotten in, in some of the other breaks that I've done with them, let's flip through real quick and I probably will send these two out. I actually got a, uh, uh, did a basketball one, a 75 basketball one and came up with the, uh, card number one right there. And this is the scoring average leaders for that year, which if you can see on the right, you got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, and you know, Rick Barry, Bob McAdoo on the, on the left. So, um, that card I mean, look at the centering on that thing. That thing is super, super nice. I mean, there's, like I said, it's, it was pack pulled. So I don't, you know, I never say, hey, I got a 10. But man, I, that, that's, that's got a small possibility to get there. 
Um, I don't really see anything else wrong with this card. There's nothing on here that leads me to believe it won't get below a 9, but, you know, I'm not PSA, so. Um, but anyway, that one's definitely going to go out for grading. And then I got in another one of those breaks, just lucked out with a, uh, I don't know what year this was. This was a 1972 uh, Topps football, and I pulled. I was able to um, snag the uh, the Joe Namath. So this one again off centered, but I mean, as clean as you're going to get for a card that old. I mean, perfectly uh, perfect corners and 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 edges. Your your issue is going to be in the surface, really nice. Issues is always going to be on these is going to be the centering. Um, this one's going to come out either an OC, but Heck, if I can get a 9 OC or something like that on that, that's just nice. So anyway, those are some of the major ones um, outside of that. Maybe, actually, there's a couple. Of, they got a Dave Winfield OPG. Again, a good bit off-centered. Yeah, that, oh, not, there you go. Um, you can see their top to bottom is pretty off. But hey, it's an OPG uh, Dave Winfield. That is a 1979 and then I've got a, um, this is a, uh, which one is it? It would be a 1972 Topps uh, football. Possibly grade this one. It's it's Charlie Sanders. I think he's more, could be considered a common. I don't, uh, I'm pretty sure of that anyway. And as you can see, pretty clean. Uh, just top to bottom, a little off center. But, you know, you can't. You're not going to win the centering battle on those. You just got to get really lucky to hit a nice centered card from back in that day. So anyway, just want to share that stuff with you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Um, give it a like. Give it a, a, um, a subs yeah, give us a, a subscribe. And I'm going to do something different this week. What I'm going to do is probably uh, something I've been wanting to do for a while is is go ahead and um, just start sending out a card maybe to um, random off anybody that subscribed uh, to the channel over the last maybe week or so. In fact, I'll just take, there's not very many subscribers we've got right now anyway, but if I, um, I'll just random off everybody uh, who has subscribed and maybe next weekend just just start rash, uh, just raffling off cards or, or, or um, doing a drawing for the cards. And, and I just picked one here, um, one that I got back from PSA uh, last week. Grading's not the best. It had a little corner issue that I wasn't aware of, but it's a, uh, a 78 Fergie Jenkins uh, 6.5. I don't know what that's worth, but hey, it's a nice little card and it's graded. So, um, I'm going to give that away to, um, to, uh, a random person who, uh, subscribes to our, uh, channel over the week, you know, so give us a like, give us a, a subscribe and hopefully we'll be, uh, able to get another one on here sometime in, the probably the next week or so. Uh, anyway, you guys take care. We'll catch up soon. Take care. Bye.